with stock up, stock down. It is market watch time. Whose stock is on the rise, Michael F. Florio? I think Chris Godwin right now is a big riser. He just had his best day of the year where he had 15 and a half fantasy points. He caught six balls, but what I really care about is the volume. Uh, 12 targets was good for 57% target share this past week, and he saw almost 50% of their air yards as well. Brady is back to having hard eyes for Chris Godwin, and we know he has a lot of upside. I think he's looking quickly getting back to the old Godwin. One guy that I'm looking at is Travis Etienne, who a couple of weeks ago, people were ready to pull the plug on, proclaiming it that it was James Robinson's backfield, but Travis has had at least 12 fantasy points in back-to-back -back games despite having zero in his first four, he's had over 100 scrimmage yards in those games, and he's getting a lot of the volume. And speaking of volume, there's a guy in the Washington, D.C. offense, Brian Robinson, who we saw on Thursday night, and they seem, like, determined to get him the football. 70, 17 rushing attempts, 60 rushing yards. Now, the touchdown was a gift. Should have never happened, but, you know, whatever. It still counts, I guess. <laughs> um, but, but the point is, is that Washington wants him to be involved, and it looks like he's going to be a factor. Who do you got as a stock down, though? I was going to go with James Robinson. You beat me to the homework. Oh, uh, ETN. So I'll just go with another running back who had a down. Uh, I'll go with another running back. What camera are we? Week. We're, we're this one right okay, here. Sorry. I can't oh. see. They won't let me wear my glasses. <laughs> uh, J.K. Dobbins. I mean, if, if, there was a lot of people who were wondering. They couldn't see J.K. Dobbins on the field. They were wondering where he was yesterday. That's because his knee tightened up on him. It's unfortunate, but it's something that I think we have to worry about moving forward, especially since Kenyon Drake looked great in his absence. Dobbins has one game all year with over 10 touches and has played fewer than half the snaps in all but one. It's getting harder and harder to trust him. It's also getting hard to trust Najee Harris right now, who did score a walk-in wide open touchdown, as you see there, but still at less than 13 fantasy points. He's yet to reach 15 in a game this year. Second straight game with fewer than 50 yards. There's just not a lot of big plays. He's not getting used in the passing game like he was last year. I'm still hopeful that it can get better, but for now, I think we have to value him as an RB2 and not a player you need to start every week. I have a fantasy league where I drafted Najee Harris and this guy, Aaron Jones. It has not gone very well for me with Aaron Jones. And listen, as earlier in the show, I'm sitting here putting my chest out, taking that humble brag on Deion Jackson. I really <laughs> gotta have a serving of humble pie for advocating Aaron Jones. And honestly, coming into the season, I don't know what, I don't know what, well, I know it's missing. Uh, their quarterback's not playing well. Um, but it's one of those things that we thought we, I, I, I bring us all in. I legitimately <laughs> thought that Aaron Rod, or Aaron Jones was gonna have a fantastic season this year. Thought he would end up being like their leading uh, target leader and everything, but this offense just looks awful. Was Nathaniel Hackett, was he that good? Was it Luke Getze? Who was it? What is going on with this Packers offense? So it has not been great. And I guess I can keep talking. They're not bringing me back on camera, like, no matter what. <laughs> They're like, you've, you've had enough screen time today. I'm just seeing until, there it is. That's all I wanted. Now I'll lay out and I'll let Patrick do the bump.